Alrighty guys, welcome to another video. My name is Leo Venus and I'm a medical doctor and a bioengineer. On this channel we talk about health, nutrition, lifestyle and pretty much anything that interests us. Now if you're new to this channel, consider clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it so that you're notified every time I post a new video. That being said, today's video topic is going to be something that was requested by you, namely PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a condition characterized by androgen excess, ovulatory dysfunction and polycystic ovaries in women. It is also a very common condition affecting around 6 to 10 percent of women and is associated with infertility, obesity, insulin resistance and diabetes, early sexual maturation, family history, anti-epileptic drugs and certain ethnic groups tend to be more prone to developing PCOS than others highlighting the important role that genetics has to play in this condition. However, contrary to what many people believe, PCOS is not a genetic disease. As I mentioned earlier, it is a multifactorial disease, meaning that there are many environmental factors that do actually affect this condition and according to up-to-date diet and its association to obesity is the most important environmental factor. In terms of medical treatments available then what do we do for people with PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome? Well weight loss through diet, exercise and behavioral change are always the first recommendations we give to these patients as this does deal with some of the more causal factors and can reduce insulin resistance, can reduce androgenism and can also give some reproductive benefits as well. Thereafter, the most common pharmacological therapy is the combined oral contraceptive pill as it can help protect from unwanted pregnancies due to irregular ovulations as well as protect the endometrium or the lining of the uterus against chronic hormone exposures. Then there is also some anti-androgenic therapies such as for example spironolactone that can reduce the effects of the excess androgenic hormones in circulation. Bariatric surgery and metformin are then often used for people who fail to go down in weight through the lifestyle changes and to be honest I think that in general doctors and the medical industry as a whole are too quick to endorse these far from optimal solutions. Thereafter most therapies are actually focused on the associated conditions such as statins for dyslipidemia, CPAP or continuous positive airway pressure for people who have obstructive sleep apnea and again in my opinion too often antidepressants for anxiety and depression. So where does this leave us with the cause of PCOS not being fully understood and none of the medical therapies being curative for this condition? What can you do as a person with PCOS? Well, in terms of the factors that you can change, the ones that will bring you the most benefits are all lifestyle factors. And this is not a way of putting the blame on you for having PCOS, but rather to empower you, to let you know there are things that you can change that will benefit you in the long run. And there are many success stories of people who did change their lifestyles and actually got all of their symptoms under control. Now the first recommendation is usually weight loss. However, not everyone who has PCOS is overweight and sometimes you can actually be thin or normal weight or on the BMI scale and still have something called visceral fat which is fat around the organs which is associated with insulin resistance or overall not being very healthy even though you are normal weight. So focusing only on weight loss I think can be a little misleading and a little counterintuitive. Now then the most important thing for you to do then as someone with PCOS is that you have to be more health conscious than a regular person. You have to do everything in your power to optimize your health. Obviously, I recommend everyone try to optimize their health, but even more so if you are someone who already has a condition that is impacted by lifestyle factors. And the two most important things for you to focus on are going to be diet and exercise. So, number one, focus on the principles of a healthy diet, like don't eat too much, don't eat processed or refined foods, focus on whole plant-based foods. Number three, eat organic as much as possible. You want to avoid the pesticides, herbicides, and all of those chemicals that are added to most conventional foods today. Number four, make water your drink of choice. And then number five, I'll just add a little caveat to the whole food plant-based, especially if you are overweight. Try to not overdo nuts and seeds because they are very calorically dense. You can still have them, they are very health promoting, but limit it to one handful a day. Otherwise, focus on legumes, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, herbs, spices, all of those health promoting foods. Now in terms of exercise then, the other big one, I would recommend, well if you look at the recommendations from the World Health Organization, they do recommend at the very minimum 150 minutes of moderate exercise or 75 minutes of intense exercise, aerobic exercise every single week. Now this is the minimum, I would actually recommend twice that much which would be at least 300 minutes of moderate exercise or 150 minutes of intense exercise 
every week. So that is pretty much it. The main message of this video is that though there are genetic factors that do contribute to this disease, I do not want you to feel that things are hopeless, that you are powerless. You are actually empowered to make a change that will help you. And to do that, as I mentioned, is to take control of your lifestyle. There are other lifestyle factors like relaxing, sleep, taking care of stress, etc. However, the most important two ones are going to be diet and exercise, which are actually also related to the other lifestyle factors that in general lead to better human health. So that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it could be helpful and informative for some of you. Do let me know what you think in the comment section below. And like always, I would say stay science-based and go plant-based. Thank you for watching.